Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Rai Sangalang, and I'm here with fine art photographer Kathy Curtis Cahill. Welcome, Kathy. Thank you, Rai. So, Kathy, how would you characterize the art and work that you do? Uh, I am very interested in early childhood. My formal training was as an art teacher, and then eventually I got into the film and television industry. And I worked on a lot of television shows that dealt with children and children's issues, oddly enough. So when I started shooting uh, and developing my career as a fine art photographer, I found that my own childhood, as well as childhood in general, as the basis of the adult you become, to be endlessly fascinating, both the good and the bad. So I would say I draw a lot on my memories, my siblings' memories, and friends, people I talk to, people uh, I interview and research. And so there's a, a commonality to what I do that, um, that I just find endlessly interesting. You'll see some of the dolls that I shoot. I don't actually photograph real children. I buy older style dolls on eBay. They have a composition faces, hands, and legs, and their bodies are cloth. These are the kinds of dolls that I played with when I was growing up, and they look very realistic. Um, so I buy them on eBay and dress them and make little sets to shoot them in to narrate a story. So I have now over 80 dolls. Um, wow. And I, I tend to shoot at a house up north near Morro Bay. And up here, people don't pay any attention to you if you're out with a handful of dolls and a camera. Whereas in Los Angeles, which is my primary residence, just even walking out with a camera and a doll, you have people wanting to know what's going on. So there's a certain amount of privacy up here that I like. And so this is where my, my studio is. Um, so I, I buy the dolls based on how they look. And so they're cast essentially. And I figure out how I'm going to shoot the story, dress them and pose them and shoot them. And I try to get them in the camera as much as possible so that the post processing is kept to a limit. Great. Can you please bring up some of your work to share with us and maybe talk us through the story behind it and the process? So Kathy, I see we're on your site. Um, why don't you please bring up uh, the first collection that you'd like to okay. talk through? The first one I did is called Memories and Demons because it's about childhood trauma. Um, lots of things happen in childhood that stay with you the rest of your life. It could be very scarring. This image is, of course, about um, sexual abuse. Some of the other images are not quite so uh, hard hitting as this one, but it was very graphic and it was considered the key uh, image of the show. So these are all dolls. Um, I'll just scroll down here. I shoot, I shoot indoors and I shoot outdoors. I use all natural light, I either use lamps if you're in an interior like this one, which is called Daddy's Girl, um, and no, no flash, no strobe, no fancy equipment. I'm a very organic shooter, and I think that comes from years of having to work on location and take my own photographs. You just, you just sort of shoot on the fly, and I think it gives it a more realistic look. Some of them that were shot outside I was fortunate enough to find an area over here that's being torn down to make a dog park and they have um, these abandoned buildings. A lot of the children that I'm representing, of course, are from lower economic classes. This one is called Little Big Man and this is to me your classic bully that's picked on and abused at home and so he takes out his anger and aggression and feelings of self-worth on his peers. These images are printed very large. They're 32 by 40 with an eight inch frame all around. So they're super life size. 
which makes them very powerful. Um, the dolls themselves all come with different expressions. Here's one I'm fond of. This is called Little Dolls. This has two meanings. Both little girls are obviously not well taken care of, and they're also given dolls that are pretty and blonde and cute and something that they will never be. A lot of girls are given uh, images that they cannot live up to, not only by the media, but by the toys that they're given. So Kathy, how'd you come upon this idea? Again, uh, everything is kind of organic for me. When I retired from set decorating, I was photographing store windows at night, uh, particularly along Melrose, Fifth Avenue, Oxford Street in London. Um, and I, I was looking for the way people represent themselves, not only to sell merchandise, but just the fad and fashion of the mannequins themselves. And I kept seeing these dolls, these old fashioned dolls, um, particularly on Melrose Avenue, being represented in a, in a very unsavory way, naked, hanging by their heads or by their legs. And I started buying them. I felt like I was rescuing them because they seemed so sad. And eventually I had a, you know, a room full of dolls. And the more I looked at them, the more they reminded me of abused children. And it literally just grew out of that situation. Then I started uh, buying dolls. This one is called Sorry. This little girl is, um, she's somebody that I actually know in real life as an adult who automatically preemptorily apologizes to ward off any um, conflict or negativity. She's one of my favorites. So this body of work, uh, I had a show in uh, July of last year, and I did very well with it. And I had the opportunity to work with the Los Angeles District Attorney's Office to show my work at their Victims' Rights Week Symposium in April. They were very uh, struck by the realism and, and the hard-hitting fact that child abuse in whatever form it takes, whether like this little girl is just living in a very angry household and she's trying to block out the anger and the shouting or in one where there is actual uh, physical menace. Um, How so, did you find dolls with so much emotion? I think if you... If you look at the older style dolls, they all did have personalities. Uh, the work that I do in post-production, this is probably one of the saddest ones. This is based on a true story. A social worker told me about a father who was burning his son with, with cigarettes. So I start with a face and then in Photoshop, I enhance the face. In this particular instance, I actually had to burn, literally burn the doll. I didn't fake the burns on that. Um, I didn't come from a terribly advantaged background and a lot of this I think was working through some difficulties I had after my parents passed away and allowing myself to be angry and to investigate perhaps why I had some of the personality traits that I did. I think these pictures can open up a dialogue and not everything will be, for instance, this was uh, being bullied. A lot of children, the the traumatic experience is not at home, but it's at school. You're the little one, you're the picked on one, you're the, the fat one, the, the slow one. And there are many reasons you're ostracized by your peers, but it leaves a very scarring effect. And here's another little guy and it's left out. And he's, for whatever reason, he's left out of play in it it really leaves lasting scars and affects the way you deal with uh, relationships the rest of your life. And a lot of society's problems, when you scratch the surface of someone that's in jail or gone through the criminal court system, you're, you're, you're probably going to find someone that was abused. Uh, my husband is a district attorney, so uh, I've heard lots of stories and have some firsthand experience with this. So, 
And because this was, again, so hard hitting and so uh, disturbing, many of the adjectives that were used, but also powerful, I wanted to show in my next series that the, the better part of childhood is make believe. I'm going to see if I can open that page. So here's my key figure. He's called Superhero. This is a very empowering fantasy. And dress up in fantasy and role playing is a very important component of a child's development. That's where they learn to develop empathy, to learn what it feels like to be somebody else. It also empowers them and they can try on different attributes without fear of recrimination because they're just playing. So I thought of all the things that, uh, that I played as a child with my brother and then also watching the children that are in my family and that I'm around and the sheer joy of pretending that you're somebody else, uh, I think lasts even into adulthood. That's why we like Halloween and costume parties. So in this collection, which I'm, uh, I have 12 of the 14 finished, and this will be deb debuting at my booth at Photo LA next week. So I have uh, Just Like Daddy, your role models that you dress up on. You're obviously imitating your, your parents. They're the, the first and most influential role models in your life. And I know we loved playing cowboys and Indians. So I try to give my photographs kind of a timeless quality. They're neither contemporary nor old fashioned, but kind of a mix of both because of my age. My memories are of being a child in the 50s, but I also think that younger people can relate just because pretending is is so much fun you just i call this wild west very cool yeah uh the last oh you have to look at this little guy this is um this is actually a little boy and he's pretending to be mommy i had an only child uh, a son and when i was home with him you know he played both superman and supergirl to him, there was nothing wrong with being either one of them. They were both super people. So I wanted to make sure that I put in there that it's absolutely normal for children to try on both male and female roles and pretend to be whoever they want to be, whoever they're influenced by. It's fun. Now, do you use a special lighting setup for each no. of these photos? <laughs> no, it's... Um, they're the um, it's incandescent light. It's lights in the house or light from the window or light outdoors. Um, it's all natural light. I don't I don't have a background in photography. I'm self-taught, although I I took some classes that were offered through uh, various places around Los Angeles. Um, you know, this is a, a second career for me. It started out as a small business to provide cleared images to my fellow set decorators when I retired. And then it, it kind of grew into something more serious. This is the last one I shot. I just shot this week. And because my house is in the central coast, it's very pirate, uh, very piratey around here. So I had done. Uh, two dolls that are, they're actually the same model of doll. And I'd been trying to figure out a way to shoot them as brothers. And so I came up with this. So this is one where I would like to show you what the original looked like and, and what my post process um, did to make it look like this. Okay, let's do it. Okay. All right. Let's see if I can get rid of that. Okay, so this is the original digital negative. And you can see um, I use a, I've here used natural sticks to, to prop up their arms. I hot glued the swords, which I made, and I made the paper hat. And I'm generally trying to find a way to get them to stand up. They do not have proper legs. They have um, cloth legs. So they don't stand. 
on their own. One of the things I do is I try to find things uh, to lean them up against. And I also will, um, up the back of the pant legs, I will run um, a stick. Usually I use yard sticks I buy them at the hardware store and cut them down so that it gives their legs some stiffness. And um, I made the eye patches. So this is just shot with natural daylight. I have a, um, a small setup that it's a, it's a scram and a bounce board, but I didn't have to use it here. It's very foggy up here. The light was very even. This is about seven o'clock in the morning, so nobody was around. So Kathy, when I, what do you shoot with? I shoot with a Sony A7R. Uh, the lens, my favorite lens is the 24 to 70 millimeter and I use a tripod. So I usually shoot at F, F11, F14 and do a, a long exposure, trying to keep my, my ISO to between 100 and 200. So shooting with a tripod, I, I do a long exposure. Pretty simple. Great. So when I put it into Photoshop, Essentially, what I do is I take out the, the props, the rubber bands, if there's any rubber bands and any sticks. I have to uh, change the faces. So here, you know, I just animate them more. Um, the dolls. And what do you use to change the faces? Uh, I use a combination of liquify and uh, cloning actually i clone as much as possible in paint in photoshop and then i go into liquify and turn up the mouth or bring down the the eyelid a little bit um let's see if i can bring them both up here you know i need to make them the same size Okay. So I've darkened it, as you can tell. So I try to bring the focus into the center of the picture. And this didn't change radically, um, but they do, they do look more animated. So this was one of the simpler this is one of the simpler pictures I did. I actually got this in one day and edited it in one day. So the original one is on the right, right? Correct. This is the original. Okay. Yeah. I could see that you had um, changed the expressions on the yes. face. Yeah. Yeah. But it, it, it also helps to look for a doll that is already expressing what you're trying to what you're trying to say so let me see if i can bring something else up here so here's one that i did it's uh it's actually my family we moved around a lot my father had a lot of jobs and this is the um this is the edited version let's see if i can bring up the original okay Let me see. So that's the original. And that was shot here in my garage. So this one I had to do a lot more to. Let's see if I can get away. So there's the original. And then when I went back in, when I went into Photoshop, I did a lot of painting on this particular one. So I had to paint in the hair. I would rather do it in Photoshop than do it on the actual doll because these dolls are composition, which is essentially paper mache with paint. If you try to paint, it just sort of bubbles up and peels away. So there's a, there's a whole process of painting these dolls. You have to sand away the face and start from the beginning. So in this particular instance, I find that it's easier to do it in Photoshop. 
So you can see that it's really quite a quite a huge difference from the original to what I wound up with. Interesting. Um, so it, it, this is the one that I've used the most dolls in. I generally, the more dolls that you have in the, uh, in the shot, then the harder it is to, um, and the longer it takes to let's see here on the original, um, on sleep tight, you can tell in order to keep her hands, in order to keep her hands together, I had to use rubber bands. And this is my husband in the background. This is just a hall light behind him. I had him dressed in black. And then I was on obviously this side of the bed and I just had uh, a light behind me. So it was fairly evenly lit. And then in Photoshop, uh, you know, I darkened, uh, there's a filter that you can use that it's just, you, you lighten the center and you darken the edges and that works really well. Uh, and then I, she had eyes that moved side to side as well as up and down, but I just emphasized, let's see if I can get them both up at the same time here. So, her eyes were to the side, but I obviously enhanced them. But if you look at the expression, it's really not vastly different. Her mouth is already turned down. You know, she already has a very sad look. And I just gave her eyebrows and really made it look like she was looking over her shoulder because she knows that the man is coming in. It is disturbing, but so is sexual molestation. It's, it's not a, it's not an easy topic, but it's a sad one, and it's one that happens all too frequently. I had a woman uh, reviewer in, in uh, New Orleans where I went at the beginning of um, December, and she literally burst into tears. She's a gallery owner. And she said, uh, how do you live with these? I could never live with these. And one of my response, well, once you go through the process and the story, then there's an objectivity that that comes with it that you you just not um it's it, now it's artwork and and i fortunately this did not happen to me i was trying to figure out the best way to show the terror of the child without actually showing the act so in all of these all of my uh pictures the face is very important. Uh, the whole story is really in the face. And I tend to keep my, um, I tend to keep my, my backgrounds to a minimum. So this is another one. This one was very influenced by um, Deanne Arbus. Here's my, my final. So, here you can see he really has a sweet little face. You know, he really is a sweet little guy. But at the end, I really needed him to be very angry and very aggressive and very confrontational. Whereas most of my children in this series are fearful and trying to protect themselves. And he is so clearly in your face. And I really looked at a lot of Deanne's stuff for that because she had a way of capturing not the sweet innocence of childhood or of, of, of people in general, but just the real underbelly, the dark side, the angry side. And people don't like to see it, but it's there. And particularly with children, exactly how they feel until society um, trains it out of them and then they hide it. But I did... Not so much on the on the bike. I just desaturated it. The stick is pretty much the same. All the work I did was was in his face. Yeah, his face definitely looks a lot more twisted. Yes, and that is liquefy. That's what I find. I I cloned a lot, and then uh, I I had to liquefy to get it. 
twisted into that expression. So I guess for me, not only doing research, but I suppose I can really feel that anger. You know, I can, I can feel everything that the dolls are feeling. And I think being able to tap into those emotions um, helps, helps me bring that out in the picture. If that makes sense. Obviously I had photographs that I used. I did internet research. I looked at pictures of children, you know, how eyes are when you're angry, what they look like when you're sad, what they look like when you're uh, happy. Um, but you, you still have to feel what the character is feeling in order, I think, to really make the face express it. Now, did you add texture and shadows to the face? Um, what happens is that in, in, in Photoshop, there's a, several filters that I put it through. I start by desaturating. So you can see here, he's really got a nice flesh tone. And I shot this probably six o'clock at night. The sun was just going down. So the, the lighting was fairly even. The other issue is that, of course, these, these dolls are painted. That's not flesh. And so it's not going to um, reflect light the way that a normal person's face would. So I have to use dulling spray. And then I have to have to try to keep as much of this glare off as I can, but there's always a little bit. So I, I have to work uh, on the face to try to even out. I use um, dynamic skin softener. And then of course, if I, in this series, I wanted to use the cracks in the doll's faces to express, I can in the face here to express the damage that's being done so he has cracks but i really emphasized them you know this is a person that's going to be just i mean you could just see the adult he's going to become and so i i really do whatever i can to bring out the emotion. So there's several filters and several processes that I use. I use liquify. I use a bleach bypass. Um, each one is a little different because the lighting's a little different. I did use in this series mostly blue because to me it was a, a sad down. Um, it's supposed to make you think and supposed to make you feel a upset. In the new series, what I use is, um, I use more red. This is called Firebug. And that's the original picture, literally the, uh, the original picture. So I found this old little ice box and I actually set the fire. I had the matches and, and the other doll in there that he's, that he's terrifying. And let's see. If I can get him. Well, here's the. The final. And. Here's the. I guess this is a better one. Okay. So on this, you can see you know the lighting is the lighting the lighting is just daylight i just used a bounce board to try to get light inside the the little refrigerator and then everything else was done in in photoshop i mean i really had to make his face angry because he's he's terrorizing her and but other than uh i moved i moved the matches up and i put a match in his hand essentially you know it's 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 pretty much in the camera and then i brought out the contrast which is something that adds to the darkness of the of the imagery and of the story i use a little paint uh, like on his shoes you know and it just darkened down certain uh certain things that are too bright and that's just with a, a you know a paintbrush in photoshop just darken it up a little bit 
but you can tell the majority of the work is in the faces. I try to get as much of the story just exactly the way I want it before I shoot it. How do you get the eyes to become so expressive? <laughs> hours and hours and hours of practice. You know, uh, it's just, I took a, a Photoshop classes. Um, I took a class and I didn't learn a whole lot. So I hired the gentleman to tutor me. He privately tutors me, he comes to my house and we work on what I want to know and what I need to learn. And I find that for me, that works best because I'll say, this is what I want you, you know, how can I move the mouth? You know, how can I get the eyes? How can I put the match in his hand? So when I got those skills, then it's just to practice. And I would say that the, in the beginning, most of these shots were shot probably a hundred times to get them the way that I, I wanted them to figure out how to work with the dolls. And then, you know, hours and hours and hours in Photoshop. It's, it's a little easier now because I've been doing it for a year and a half. Uh, like I was able to do, to do pirates fairly quickly, but I'd actually shot that three days over uh, Thanksgiving vacation, three mornings in three different settings and still wasn't happy. And then when I thought about it, I figured out exactly what I wanted it to be. So it can be a pr trial of, you know, um, trial and error. But I will say that my background in set decorating, you had a script, you had 22 sets, you had to get them done. So I tend to work very fast. And that's why I like things to be as real as possible. I'd rather be working with the dolls and shooting than, than working in Photoshop. So I really try to get, try to get that down to the to a science, you know, making the, the position of him, knowing what I wanted the end to look like, really he's positioned exactly the same as is she. Uh, so you, you, but that's my television training. So I would say that um, your background, you bring, when you go into any kind of art, if you're coming from another field or a related field, you bring all that experience with you. So building the sets and telling stories is what I did for a living. I just tend to do it with dolls now and I'm dealing with childhood as opposed to, you know, actors on a stage. So Kathy, do you have any advice for aspiring artists? Yes, I would say that uh, first of all, if you're an artist, you're very special. We're special people. We look at the world in a different way and we reinterpret it and give it back to the general public so that they can see things the way we do. We all have a unique vision. And if it's photography, then the first thing you need to know how to do is shoot. So shoot everything because by shooting everything you know landscapes and people and flowers um, water birds whatever interests you and then something will click you'll find your your passion you'll find something that you have uh, a tremendous um, attraction to and that you feel like you have something to say or a unique point of view and work work hard work, work, work. And out of that, out of the shooting, out of all the hours that you spend, you will develop your own style and your own voice. But even in the classical painting, you always studied the masters first. And then by learning how to paint, you developed your own style. And that's so it is with any art form. So if you're speaking about photography, get a camera, learn how to shoot that. When you get better, get a better camera. You learn how to shoot with that and get a better camera. Don't start with the most expensive camera you can buy because you can learn the basics on one that's, that's you know, I started with uh, a T2i when I was doing digital, which is the kit lenses. And when I outgrew that, you know, I got a Canon. And then from a Canon, I went to the Sony because it's very portable. It's very lightweight. I like the mirrorless cameras and also uh, 34 megapixels. So that, that certainly helps with, uh, with the resolution. So my advice is to just do the work and enjoy it because it is hard work. And if you don't enjoy it, then you should find something else to do. But I could 
shoot 10 hours a day and then edit all night because I'm really caught up in, in, uh, in making this particular image and telling this particular story. So find a mentor. That's another thing. Find somebody that believes in you that you can ask questions and like, how do I move the eyes? And I think that by taking classes and being around other photographers or other artists within that homogeneous group, you will find the support that you need to, to advance. I think that's very important too, is, is to have a society of other artists that speak your language. So Kathy, what's next for you? Well, after Photo LA, um, I will be taking uh, my portfolio to Houston to PhotoFest, which is a biennial, and uh, seeing gallerists and collectors from all over the world. So I'm hoping to um, get another show. In the meantime, I will be showing both bodies of work at the Victims Crimes Week Symposium in April. So I'll be preparing for that. And then I have to continue shooting, figure out where I'm going to go from childhood. So working on that, thinking, big ideas. Kathy, where can people find you? Well, if you Google Kathy Curtis Cahill, I'm all over the internet um, from my my career in film and television to the photography. So uh, just Google me. It'll take you to my website. I have uh, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. So I have just about, I've got all the social media covered. And I also have a PR person, uh, uh, Shoebox PR, and she posts a lot as well. So I should be pretty easy to find. So Kathy, um, thank you so much for your time today. I really appreciate it. Oh, thank you very much for joining me and what I've uh, started calling the Cahill kids. So thank Great. you very much, Ry. That's our show for today. Thank you for tuning in. If you have any questions, please send an email to Ry at makephotoart.com. For more videos and articles, please visit our site at makephotoart.com.